come across the assessment on page 261. 261, first rip. Go back to Okay, the whole problem with the first rib is that it can either be just elevated or it can be subluxed. Right? Either way, you're going to treat it the same way and you're not going to be aggressive with it. So essentially, if this is my first rib and it's sitting here, you know that it makes its contact where the clavicle does, the notch. What ends up happening oftentimes with a severe side bending injury, okay? Trauma. Scalenes on the side, especially the anterior and middle that attach to the first rib, help to jerk it up. And it usually goes a slight bit posterior too. But more the focus of the elevation. All right? On the same side as the, wait, opposite side of, opposite side of the side bend same side as the scalenes that jerked it up. Okay? That's pretty straightforward, first rib. On the board here, last night, I outlined what exactly is happening in a chart's format methodology. So the asymmetry that you're going to see when you do this assessment, because the person's going to come in and say, God, the side of my neck is painful and it feels like there's something hard there. Well, there is. The rib's a little out of place. The asymmetry here from left to right, if we're talking about a right side at sublux rib, it's going to be elevated at least five millimeters or just under a quarter inch of elevation. In terms of the R, the range of motion, and this will kind of bring you back to cardiopulm for a couple seconds, there's an exhalation restriction. <coughs> Because you learn in cardiopalm of the mechanics of the rib cage, when we go up, we're going when we go into inhalation, ribs kind of go up. It's already up, so it's not a problem. Inhalation. It's when you try to exhale that it stays elevated, it doesn't come back down. Okay, the other side does, this side doesn't. So you take your breath in, do it with the other one. So you take your breath in, and then you breathe out. Oopsie, that's a problem. Right there, on the right. <laughs> okay. So, that's where we're going. Exhalation restriction. T is for tenderness and increased tone of the scalenes. It only makes sense that if the scalenes are helping to keep it in place, then we've got a problem with the scalenes and we have to work on them. Okay? So, scalenes are definitely going to be a factor here with the elevated first rib. So what we want to do is we want to be able to first assess for it, and it's going to be nice because now that you have those things written out for you on the uh, board, these are the things that we're actually looking for. All right. So someone come up here. I'm going to show you how you do the assessment for it. It's pretty easy. Here it is. Thank you. you can have a seat right there. So you can follow along on page 261. And pretty much the it's going to be 1514 and 1515. There he is. How can you miss that guy with a face? There you go. Okay. So um would it be too much trouble to ask you to take your shirt off? Oh, mm. <laughs> so early. Why dress sooner? Okay. You thought I'd never ask, guys. <laughs> Let's face it, he really didn't have to. I just knew that. All right. Now, what you want to do, if you come down here, you're going to be on upper trap. Okay, so what you need to do is you kind of have to pull upper trap out of the way. Now the way that Phil Greenman suggests you do that is just come to the anterior margin of the upper trapezius, pull it away, and then 
assess by pressing inferiorly because now you're on first rib once you do that. So you come down the neck, come right about to where it angles out along the, uh, the curve of the upper trap. Look straight ahead. Thanks. Coming down, so right about here. Pull that upper trap away. Press down on the right. Press down on the left. Do you feel the difference? I'm elevated on the right. right? Yeah, he is. He's elevated on the right. Mm -hmm. So, Matt, you'll feel that very easily. Okay, so it's right there. And the first rib is literally right there. It's got to come around like this, go into the clavicle. It's high up. Everybody doesn't realize that that's where the first rib is. So that's it. We have it. I put him to bed. So, not to bed. so elevated on the right. Now, once you have your finding with your palpation, it's no problem to come in and assess to see how the scalenes are. Feel for any extra hypertonicity, and I do feel that in here on the right. But then, what you could do, you can have the breath go in. I feel them both now come up symmetrically in inhalation and breathe out. Left one continues to drop down, right one lags behind. There's your range of motion. How long did that take? Not really too long. But until you realize that you can actually feel for the first rib and know where it is and what the dysfunctions will probably be in this presentation, why would you ever go up there and check it out? So, once we do that, we need to try to fix it. All right? Now, the easiest way to fix the rib, if it's superior and a bit posterior, what do we need to do with the rib to help reposition it? We need to bring it down and a little forward. Beautiful. So, the correction for that is on page 267. That's where it starts. Now, he demonstrates it on the book in, on the left. He actually has one on the right. Is it, do you want, just for clarity's sake, to do it the way it is in the book? And then I can let Matt fix the right one, or do you mind if I try to help him out with that first rib? To the right, yeah. To the right, kind of straight enough forward. It's not a lot of twisting in the spine and stuff like that. Okay. <clears throat> so what I need to do then is take off my other sheet. Okay. The reason why I'm putting my foot up here is because when I drape his arm over my side, and if I translate them to the left, I'm actually causing what side bending to occur? Right. And if I want to shorten the tissue, I can shorten from the top down by side bending the head, and then I can shorten from the bottom up by bringing his trunk to that side. So I've got two controls for the side bend. First get my contact. And now, Phil Greenman says in the book that he's going to pull back the upper traps with his fingers and then place his thumb in place. You can do that, and that's exactly what the book tells you to do. What I would also send as a recommendation to you is that use your MCP of your second finger, second MCP, pull back the upper trap, and then press down. Kind of like that contact a little easier because then I can better control the rib itself. But if you want to do it with the thumb, that's fine too. Right. <clears throat> so arm is going to get draped over. Any questions so far? Okay. Going to find the first rib. Going to translate them to the left, causing side bend right. I'm going to also now side bend him to the right. And the reason why I want to do that is I want to put the scalenes on slack. Okay. I want to shorten them up. So he's taking you through the whole process. And then he finally gets you on 268 with that final um, localization for the anterior scaling, especially by giving side, uh, rotation and side bending to the same side. Okay. Now the muscle energy here is pretty easy because my force here on my right hand is going inferior and a slight bit anterior. I've controlled him and localized the barrier with the side bending and the rotation. Now the muscle energy performed here is actually for activation of the left scalenes because they're antagonistic to the right and if I activate the left, 
I have to shut down the right, correct? That's how agonist antagonists work. So I'm getting inhibition in that way of the right scaling. By activating the left scalenes, I'm working on the principle of agonist antagonist. So if I activate the left scalenes, the right scalenes have to shut down and become inhibited. All right. What I'd like for you to do is just try to side bend your head to the left against the force of my hand. Hold, two, three, four, five, relax. One, two, three. Again. Inferior, oops, sorry. I was going to say again. Inferior displacement of the first rib, slight bitty anterior, further localization with the side bend and rotation. One more time with the muscle energy to the left. Two, three, four, five. Relax. Two, three. Reposition. And then bring them into that range. Okay. Now, if it's just an elevated rib, if it's just an elevated rib and it's not completely subluxed, working them with the muscle energy and then giving them a gentle home exercise for right scaling stretching will be fine. You just have to make sure that when they do, you're also asking them to do it with something to hold down the first rib. Okay, because you don't want the tightness of the scaling to then pop the rib up again. It's a subluxation. What you want to do is once you have it back in place, tape it into place or provide it with a strap or some kind of fixation because there's instability there. And especially when you have subluxation of any kind, you don't want to let that instability remain or uh, run the risk of another subluxation. Again. All right. So after You can either send them home with strap or a piece of tape over that area. For how long? Until you see them again. Until you see them again. And then you're able to reassess how the position is. Symptoms that some people may have with this, what do you expect if the scalenes are really tight on one side or if the rib is elevated? What big bunch of whatever comes out of the neck and goes through that area? Brachial plexus. Brachial plexus, neurovascular bundle. So thoracic outlet syndrome, tingling, numbness, all that kind of stuff. All right? Yeah? Will that pain when breathing? If it's, they'd have, more, they'd have more pain if it was a lower rib dysfunction. This one's not really fucking into anything uh, when you're doing the inhalation. A lot of people have a little bit of a trouble when it's a lower lesion and they're restricted in either inhalation or exhalation. Any other questions? All right, break down into lab. Uh, you guys could be facing forward at least.